shoulder problems. Undoubtedly, the joint that causes the most problems in the extremity joints, those being the shoulders, the elbow, wrist, fingers, hip, knee, ankle, and toes, is the shoulder joint. So why does the shoulder joint cause people the most problems? And in fact, so many people throughout the entire world are struggling with shoulder issues. Well, there's a few reasons. Let's get into some of the some of the functional reasons why the shoulder can cause so much problems because knowledge is power. And if you have the understanding and the knowledge, then it's the first step often in your own recovery and starting that process of improving and healing. Let's have a look at the movement of the shoulder. So first of all, let's compare it to say the movement of the wrist. So the movement of the wrist is that way, that way, that way, that way, and we can rotate back and forth. The movement of the elbow, it's that way, that way, that way, and that way. The movement of the shoulder, it's always. It's out, it's back, it's that way, it's that way, and then it's full circles in all sorts of directions. So the shoulder has this potential of planes of movement in so many different directions. And anatomically, the shoulder is your arm is coming up and there's a ball at the top of the humerus bone here and then there's your torso and there's uh, many muscles, ligaments and tendons connecting your arm through to your torso which creates the shoulder joint. So effectively it's not really a great fitting joint in terms of ball and socket well, well matched. Like a ball and a socket in a similar shape that groove into each other. Rather, it's hanging free with soft tissues, ligaments, tendons, muscles, and the bursa, actually providing the, um, providing the connection, really, between your limb and your torso. So why does that make a difference, and why can that make your shoulder much more susceptible to causing problems? Well, simply speaking, we move and use it so much more, because it's capable of being used and moved so much more. It's, it's, you think about all the movements that you're doing, whether they're overhead, whether they're behind you, whether they're in front of you, whether they're to the side of you, it's always using your shoulder. And also, is it not just using your shoulder, it's using all the muscles within the shoulder. Now, the muscles within your shoulder, commonly the ones that are doing the most work are four muscles which consist of the rotator cuff. So the rotator cuff are the four muscles that rotate and move your shoulder through most of its movements. Now the rotator cuff, it fatigues, it starts to wear out, it starts to inflame and it starts to cause pain and tendonitis so commonly. It's almost an epidemic of it. Now the reason why that's happening is because in certain movements, particularly movements where we're up and extended out to the side up over our head, there is a little pinching of the blood supply and the blood vessels into the rotator cuff muscles. So if we are susceptible anatomically from the, from the arm to the torso and the way the bones are knitted together or coming near each other, if we have a little bit of, you know, you're naturally maybe a little bit closer packed in that area and you use your arms over the head a lot, you are pinching the blood supply to those muscles, which over time leads to poor function of the muscles, fatigue and inflammation. Fatigue and inflammation cause pain. And that is the term that you probably heard of called rotator cuff syndrome, rotator cuff tendonitis, supraspinatus tendonitis, etc., etc. These are the terms that are commonly reported upon with shoulder MRIs and ultrasounds showing that the shoulder is actually deteriorating and the reason for the pain is that the muscular stability around the shoulder is starting to fatigue and not be able to function correctly. So the purpose of today's video is just to help you understand the actual anatomy of the shoulder, how it uh, is situated and why it causes so many problems. I'm going to elaborate in a future video about some of the key things that you can do yourself if you have got a nagging shoulder to help yourself at home naturally and 
bring yourself closer towards some form of recovery. Now, I, I, I can't overlook the fact about your neck and your shoulder. Now, it is important to remember, when you go upstream from a muscle, in terms of if a muscle is here, what is coming into the muscle to control it? A signal, a signal from your brain, a signal through your nervous system. Any form of poor function through your neck, any straightening of your neck curve, any compression through the neck joints and poor mobility through the neck joints can and often does affect the shoulder and affect the nerve supply to the shoulder and further increase the likelihood of your shoulder and the rotator cuff areas declining over time. So you can't overlook the neck in a shoulder issue. But there are many shoulder issues that are shoulder issues, shoulder issues themselves. But if we don't also take a look at the neck in my experience, then at the same time, we deal with the neck if need be and the shoulder to get the best possible outcome for the person. As I said, I'll come back with some more videos on what you can simply do to stretch and move your, your arm if you know you've got a rotator cuff issue to start that process of restoration and rehabilitation. I hope you've enjoyed this information and if you have any questions, comment and I will do my best to answer them for you. Thanks for watching.